world on Monday. So if you fancy seeing what Russian television is like in Sheffield on a Tuesday afternoon, <laughs> see what happens when I visit a man with a satellite aerial in his back garden. Yes, I shall be making a soup that will warm the cockles of your heart. So we'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. This is. She's a little bit fuzzy and uh, all of a wobble. Don't blame it on the snow. It's probably because your aerial is badly situated. Either that or there's probably some tall hills, tall trees, or some very large buildings between you and the transmitter. Well, there's only very much you can do about that. But in the future, there is one way that you will be able to improve your TV reception, and that's by using rockets like this. Rocket's cargo is a communication satellite. It relays television pictures between different countries. There are quite a few of them up there, and because there are no obstacles in space, the signal comes through loud and clear. And if you swap your ordinary rooftop aerial for a giant satellite dish, you could receive television pictures from all over the world. The very first man in Britain to do this is Steve Burkhill of Sheffield. He's got his very own satellite station at the bottom of his really garden. Quite a dish, Steve, not the sort of thing you get in your local TV shop. If you didn't know what it was from a distance, you might think it was a giant bird bath or something. That's what it's been described as. <laughs> now, how long has it taken you to build it? The dish is a, is a commercial item. Um, the electronics have been uh, built uh, by me over a period of probably about five years total for all the full system. That looks desperately complicated. Does that fit onto the dish somewhere? Then? Yes, that, that fits uh, at this point here, which is the prime focus of the dish. The dish receives the signal from the satellite, reflects it, such that it all comes to a focus somewhere here. This collects that energy. And you just, you, that will just plug into yep. the set? If I take this cable here. Yeah, okay. Plug this in to the head unit. Then we're now feeding satellite signals back into the house. Steve went off to adjust the special receiver in his living room, whilst I was left to point the aerial at a satellite. Back! You can't see any of the satellites, of course, but Steve knew roughly where to aim for and guided me in electronically. Is that about right? The signal strength display enables Steve to pinpoint the satellite with absolute precision. Stay. It was frustrating tilting and turning the dish and not seeing what we'd found. I was really looking forward to seeing the pictures. What have you got, Steve? It's uh, Russian television, Moscow Channel 1. Uh, looks like a dancing program. That's remarkable. The, the quality of the picture is superb, isn't it? It's better than what I get watching BBC in Wimbledon. It's very good. Well, that's yeah. really coming from a satellite? Yeah, that's from a Russian satellite over the Atlantic, beaming uh, back to Europe, uh, Moscow on program. What sort of distance is, it? is that? Well, the, the, sat the satellite's at an altitude of 36,000 kilometres above the Earth's surface, or thereabouts. It's quite a jolly, jolly programme, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Very, very colourful. As the satellite carries on its orbit above the Earth, will, will this get... The signals here get weaker and the pitch eventually just disappear and leave you with a fuzzy screen. No, it, uh, it doesn't happen like that. The, the satellite is in uh, geostationary orbit. It's, uh, it's in what? Uh, well, I'll, I'll explain to you. Uh, um, come over here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, if you consider this to be the satellite, um, mm. the satellite is in equatorial orbit. It's, it's a long way out, actually, over the equator. But its height is such that it orbits the Earth at the same angular speed as the Earth rotates, so that um, it maintains its position over one point on the Earth's surface all the time. So that any um, Earth station needs only to have its dish pointed in one direction and it will continuously look at the satellite. There's no need for tracking or worrying yeah. about the satellite coming up over the horizon or right. anything like that. Yeah, I've understood that. And how big an area does the satellite cover? Um, well, the particular satellite we're looking at at the moment, the Russian one, uh, is on a European spot beam. And uh, if I take this torch, you, uh, you can imagine the, the satellite situated over the equator yeah. generates a, a beam of radio frequency radiation which illuminates, in this case, Eastern Europe and the western parts of the Soviet Union. And it puts in sufficient signal strength into uh, the UK for us to get very good reception mm. from it. Steve can get pictures from up to 12 different satellites. The next station we found was in the Sudan, 4,000 kilometres away. have a lot of air fresheners. <laughs> I don't know, we've got a big thing about air fresheners in the Sudan. 
And with just a flick of the switch from there, we'd found Saudi Arabia. Considering where the pitch is coming from, it's extraordinarily good. It's not quite as good as the Russian one, but it's, it's still very good, isn't it? Yes, it is. It'd be nice to see Kenneth Kendall dressed up like that. I wonder what he'd think about it. Oh, it's the weatherman. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Yeah. Why on earth do they need a weather forecast in Saudi Arabia? I'm sure they have their fair share of weather, just as we do. They're rather warmer most of the time, I should Absolutely, think. Absolutely, same. <laughs> hot. Very hot. Extremely hot. <laughs> I could have gone on switching stations all day, but next we found a football match. Judging by the quality of the picture, this is Russian television again. Yes, we're now back on the Russian satellite, and this is their principal channel. Oh, it's this... quite a pitch, isn't it, that? Is it, is it indoor? Five aside, six aside? I have... Yes, it looks as though... It looks as though it's indoor. Oh, where's the score? That's uh, Zenith, Zenith Leningrad. Score. Oh, close. Leningrad? You, yeah, one of the teams was Leningrad, and the other was, I think, Torpedo Moscow. I wonder if they yes, to say, they, they do action replays. Yes, yeah, just the same as we oh. do. The forward in the white shirt nearly got in, yeah. Steve, do you think in the fairly close future, lots of people will have dish aerials in their back gardens? They'll, I suppose there'll be the enthusiasts who will tune into satellite TV from all over the world, but in due course, uh, many homes will have their own small dish for direct broadcast satellite TV, which is due the back end of this decade for this mm. country. Anyway, uh, I wish you happy viewing. Thank you. It's exciting to think that in the not too distant future, you and I may be able to scan the heavens and enjoy programs from countries all over the world. And you never know, one day you may be able to watch Blue Peter beamed from a satellite.